Hey guys, welcome to this channel. It's 10 minutes video or more, so make sure you grab some snacks before continuing watching this video. Or you can just pause the video later. In this video there is a very sensitive and historical case which is the foundation of laborers' rights until this day. There was one person who was fighting for the welfare of laborers at that time, and the impact is still there today. It is still a mysterious case until now because the person behind the death of Marcina is still unknown. The process was terrifying, it gave the listener chills like a horror film become true. Marcina was found under conditions that we could not imagine could happen to humans, especially women. She is the person who strives hard for human rights, especially for the welfare of laborers. If you are interested in stories about human rights, especially in Indonesia, Marcina is a good case to study. And this is a very important case especially for laborers. Marcina is a woman who was born on April 10, 1969, to be precise in the village of Nglundo, Nganjik, East Java, a relatively small area. And so that you can learn more about the character of Marcina, you will be told about the background of Marcina itself. Since she was three years old, her mother was pass away. And after her mother died, Marcina and her older sister lived together, while her younger sibling lived with her grandmother. Therefore Marcina and her sister were very close after her mother's departure, and always shared stories with each other. After that, of course, Marcina took education. Marcina attended Karangasam Elementary School, a public elementary school, then when middle school entered SMPN 5 Nganjik, then after graduating Marcina attended Sma Muhammadi Nganjik. During study year, Marcina's friends told that Marcina was a smart person with a very independent character, and quite high intellectuals too. In fact, in a few years she often become top ranker. Due to limited financial because Marcina born from poor family, Marcina had to postpone her dream of continuing her education. At that time Marcina wanted to continue her education to a law degree. And because she could not get the fees, therefore Marcina had to work to raise money so that she could continue her dream as a law graduate. Her first workplace was a shoe factory in Surabaya. Marcina applied for a job as a laborer because she did not have a certificate of undergraduate education. Then Marcina moved to a watch company called PT Chatter Putra Surya, or shortened to PTCPS, located in Rungkut, Surabaya. When she was working, she always told her older sister that she wanted to go to college. Marcina is eager to enter university to study law because she has a vision to be able to help her friends, who often have problems related to their work as laborers. Her older sister could not pay for it because she had just married. Marcina was forced to continue working as a laborer and struggled to raise money. When PTCPS opened a branch in Sidarjo, Marcina also moved from Rungkut Surabaya to Sidarjo to work in a new factory owned by PTCPS. Since working at PTCPS, Marcina often reads newspapers which at that time had a lot of news about labor demonstrations. Marcina often reads the news in order to be able to make a good demonstration and also learn about the correct demands that are in accordance with the regulations of the Ministry of Manpower to be applied in the factory where she works. Marcina wants to be able to improve the welfare of her fellow laborers. Because at that time Marcina and her fellow laborers at PTCPS was only paid 1700 rupiah per day in 1993, while according to the Ministerial Decree 50 of 1992, the East Java regional minimum wage was 2250 rupiah per day. Even the provincial government of Surabaya has also passed this rule as a circular letter to entrepreneurs. But unfortunately the entrepreneurs, especially the owners of PTCPS, refuses to increase laborers' salaries. PTCPS is only willing to increase their salaries through allowances, instead of basic salaries, of course, this allowance will disappear automatically if the laborer does not attend or take holidays or permits or for any reason. Regarding menstruation or pregnancy it will still make these benefits disappear. Therefore, several laborers including Marcina, became laborers who led the demonstration to uphold justice and welfare for the laborers, especially at PTCPS. Then on May 2, 1993 Marcina and also some of her friends held a meeting to discuss the labor demonstration the next day, on May 3, 1993, at the CPS factory. On 3 May 1993 the laborers of PTCPS does a demonstration in a factory environment. But before this demonstration could take place, this demonstration was disbanded by the sub-district military command. 
So there was the military protecting or blocking the demonstration from taking place, and according to the testimony of the laborer at PTCPS, stated that out of the many demonstrations that have occurred, the demonstration on May 3 in 1993 was one of the demonstrations with a tense situation because many officers were present at the demonstration to disperse and prevent the laborers from demonstrating. On the following day in May 1993, after failing to hold a demonstration in the factory environment, they went on strike with a total of 12 demands. Some of the demands were a 20% salary increase, compensation for maternity leave, menstrual leave allowances, insurance must be borne by the company, there was also a request for dissolution and repairs of the All Indonesian Laborers Union or SPSI, which at that time were considered to have different vision with laborers. At that time SPSI was the only legal labor organization in the regime of President Suharto. Of course, the organization during the New Order era was full of government control. At that time, a month before Marcina's death, President Suharto had just attended a human rights meeting in Thailand and stated that the draft law belonging to the United Nations could not be applied to countries in Asia, especially Indonesia. And Asians are not allowed to criticize their leaders. In contrast to Western countries which are protected by freedom of speech. Even in the context of labor and human rights, President Suharto had sufficiently strong instruments to intervene with laborers who wanted to protest. This is stated in the Bakertana's Decree of 1990 and the Minister of Manpower Decree No. 342 of 1986 that it is the military only who can mediate between employers and laborers in a dispute. This intervention was very strong and clearly legal at the time. On 5 May 1993, after a massive strike at the factory, one of the leaders of the demonstration, Yudi Prokoso, was arrested by the authorities and accused of being communist. This is because the demonstration was similar to the Communist Party demonstration at that time. After Yudo Prokoso was arrested, Marcina took over the leadership of the demonstration and succeeded in conducting negotiations with the company. But at that time the negotiations were not filled with laborers and employers only, but there were related officials such as the village head, Coromel the military district command and others. Apparatus is often seen as siding with employers in the entrepreneur versus labor conflict. Although the meeting did not go smoothly due to the presence of apparatus S in the negotiation process, all the laborers' demands could be granted with the help of a massive strike. Only one of the 12 requests could not be granted, namely the dissolution and justification of SPSI, because the company considered they did not have the capacity to relate to the organization. After the negotiations were over with happiness in the hearts of the laborers because the demands had been fulfilled, on the same day based on the story of the Solidarity Committee for Marcina or Kasim, Yudo Prokoso received a summons letter to go to the District Military Command Office or Kodam 0816 Adorjo to record the names involved in this action. On the other hand, the negotiations are over, which makes Yudo Prokoso confused and has to write down who was involved in the labor demonstration. The next day there were 12 names that Yudo Prokoso had written. Then they were all called Kodam 0816 Adorjo. Then they were put into the same room and asked to sign a letter of resignation from PTCPS because it was deemed that their power was no longer needed and had made the laborers go on strike which made the company suffer losses. If they do not resign, they will be threatened to be dismissed unilaterally and they cannot even work anywhere in the Sidorjo and Surabaya areas. The threat that was considered the harshest was the communist accusation against the 12 names. Hearing his friends being called, Marcina went straight to Kodam 0816 and asked where her friends were. Marcina here cannot meet her friends because they are said to have returned home, even though they are still inside. According to the witness named Ponadin who was included in the 12 names, after being sent home, he met Marcina at an intersection and told her that the 12 of them had quit their jobs and could not do anything else. They are quite afraid because their opponent is not the company but the Kodam. Upon hearing this, Marcina was furious and stated that one of the demands granted by the leadership of PTCPS is not allowed to dismiss laborers associated with the demonstration. This is what triggered Marcina's anger. Why there was dismissal after the negotiations were granted. Then Marcina returned to her residence to prepare to go again to Surabaya. Marcina wanted to ask for help from one of her relatives who worked at the Surabaya prosecutor's office to help her friend's case where PTCPS had broken the negotiations at that point. After his departure on May 5, 1993, the next day Marcina disappeared and was declared missing. Her friends assumed that Marcina had returned to Nganjik. It turned out that on May 8, 1993, Marcina was found dead in a hut in Jegong, Wilangan village, Nganjik. At that time the death of Marcina was considered a common criminal accident, albeit in quite dire circumstances. 
Some of the post-mortem that the body showed were found wounds in the genital, torn hymen, broken bone fragments, bruised intestines and bleeding in the stomach. Since many demands from the Legal Aid Institute and friends of Marcina considered Marcina's death to be quite odd, this ordinary criminal case was reopened and a special team was created for this case. When this special team was formed, rumors arose, such as a love triangle, but was denied by her friends because Marcina did not have a boyfriend. Then there was the issue of fighting over inheritance, even though Marcina was a poor family without contested assets. A few days later there were 10 people from PTCPS who were taken and held for 19 days at Kottam 5 Brajaya and forced to confess that they planned and killed Marcina. It is said that they were tortured by licking the floor clean, pulling out the grass with their mouths, giving electric shocks to their genitals, burning their body parts with cigarettes. One of the female victims was even verbally threatened which made her mentally fall so that she had a miscarriage at the age of three months of pregnancy. They were forced to admit to Marcina's murder so that the director was charged with 17 years in prison, while the rest ranged from four to five years. They headed back to court and were released due to insufficient evidence. The strongest alibi was when the director was accused of planning the murder in Porong Sidorjo, even though he was in the Surabaya. This dropped the charges against nine more people. Then there is evidence that has also fallen in the form of a wooden block that is thought to have been used to torture Marcina's genitals but did not match her post-mortem due to the different forms of wounds. This is related to the bleeding that occurred in the victim's body, which was considered the result of a genital shot. This raises a question about access to weapons that were not possible for the civilian at that time. Until now, it has not been revealed who the real culprit was. After the closure of this case through a successful court of appeal by 10 people from PTCPS, this case is still not fruitful. The National Commission on Human Rights has even asked the Indonesian president, Gus Duran Megawati, to open the Marcina case, but nothing has been done so far. However, Marcina's struggle and her death resulted in a new regulation which is the embryo of the welfare of the laborers. The similarity of demands made by Marcina in the past is similar to what is happening to laborers today. There is still the smell of slavery at some companies that want to save money. Indeed, because the times changed everything because of the robot era. Companies want a small fee to produce goods, and if they spend more money the company can go bankrupt on the other hand, there are also underage laborers. If we pull a thread about labor, it will always get tangled because there are many aspects of life in it. Thank you for watching this video channel, don't forget to subscribe and look forward to the next video.